Okay, so I want to, this is the picture that I am selecting, and this is a place that I had so much fun in. I'm really missing traveling right now, and um, Laura and I went to Spain and Portugal. This is a little town called Pen uh, Peniscala, um, and it's along the coastline, and I just loved these little alleyways, and I loved getting lost through these little streets and cobblestone uh ground and whatnot so i am grabbing this photo from my collection and i am going to try my best to reinterpret it but the thing that i'm going to keep in mind is i really really want to embrace imperfections i don't want to try to make this look exactly like what i see and there's a few reasons why i don't want to take away from the uh, the main elements that really grab my attention, such as these buildings in the foreground, and then these banners going across uh, the bunting in between buildings. I really like that. Um, so if I was to do everything with as much detail, it would start to look really overwhelming. And so I'm gonna show you how to really quickly go through and sketch something out like this with minimal detail that really brings it to life because the beautiful thing about being able to sketch something that you see is that you get to pick and choose what to put in what to leave out and what to enhance based off the detail that you um, are focused on in your illustration so i'm using archival pens and the reason why is because i want to um, be able to watercolor over them without the ink bleeding. And these are the Pigeon Letters monoline pens, the shameless plug, but I'm doing it because these pens I actually had created on purpose for drawing. Um, you might find some other archival ink pens and they do not have this nice, I don't know if you can see that, rounded tip. The rounded tip is ideal for drawing, whereas the other archival pens you'll find, a lot of them are meant to draw at 90 degrees only because they're for drafting. So. Shameless plug, okay, I'm done. Um, <laughs> so I wanna first point out what it is that I look for in a photo. This one's pretty easy because I am seeing lines in the direction that I wanna focus on along with uh, shapes. So the first thing that I want to point out is that you will see a vanishing point. And what that means is the angle, this is easy because it's got it on the building for me. So I can see that it's going this way, right? And if I kept going, it would be like this. Same thing right here. If I kept going, then it would go further. This right here has become my vanishing point, okay? This is also, you'll notice, my horizon line. So you can tell from this image that I would be standing a little bit higher. Maybe this is um, a, these are either steps or it's some sort of hill. And so you can see that my vanishing point, or excuse me, my horizon line, my eye level, is actually at the top of these buildings. So that means that um, rather than drawing from the ground up, I'm actually drawing from the buildings, um, from this awning here, and then you know, in and down um, right here. And then you'll see that this has its own vanishing point and own vanishing point going down to right here. So if you can keep that in mind, everything will fall into play. Now the next step of this that I like to do, I'm totally <laughs> gonna ruin this image by showing you guys this, but I want you to be able to break it down the way that I'm going to. So the other part of it that I really pay attention to are shapes and <clears throat> is shapes, whatever, grammar. <laughs> um, so I find something that's kind of like an average size. So let's say I wanna focus on, hmm, what's a good shape here? I'll focus on like a, this door here. So I can see, yes, it's slanted, it's going toward my horizon line, but right now I'm just going to see that it's like a square shape, right? So now you would do this in person, but you would also do it on a photograph. And in person, you could hold your pen out like if, you're, if your uh, arm is all the way straight and then eyeball, close one eye and eyeball and see how tall something is according to what you're holding. Or you could do it directly onto the uh, image that you're using. So I can see that that's about this much length. So as I'm drawing over here, 
then I can say like, let's say I already drew this door, which I'm gonna get to. Then if I wanna draw something over in this area, I can say, okay, well my door is this big. And so I'm gonna do, this looks like it's about half. Like if I eyeballed it, I would have thought that was bigger. So when I draw that detail, I know it's about half the size of what I just drew, if that makes any sense. So that's just a little trick. Otherwise, I'm looking at um, you know shapes. I see that this is a cylinder, and then I see that it goes straight down, and then it's a cylinder right here. You know, I see that these are squares, these are squares, okay, inside of this rectangle. I see that Here's another rectangle. I see that here's a slant, a slant, and then, you know, these are things that I'm looking at. And basically, I can start out by drawing this overall shape. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can see through all this marker that I just put on here. But, um, so since since the door was the first thing that I noticed, I wanna, um, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball and see where my frame is, so if, it looks like I'm about a third of the way up. So there's if you put if you cut this into thirds, my eye level is about a third of the way up. So I'm going to know that. And then my eye level is also that's where this door kind of starts. So I'm going to start it like this. And it's OK if it's not perfectly angled, you know, because and then you'll see. Um, let's see, it's probably going to go here which looks a little bit weird, I know, but you know, it'll all make sense when it's all going to that direction. So it might not be as angled here as here, but you can see that that's just following that um, <clears throat> horizon line. Okay, so you can see that I did this real choppy and weird, and that's okay because that's the way that I sketch. Like some people like to do nice straight lines. I go over mine a few times. I like them kind of wobbly. I'm using an 05. That's another thing to keep in mind as you are sketching because you might notice that um, you like your lines nice and bold or you like them nice and thin. So that's all gonna make a difference too. Um, so above that I see this balcony. I see that it's kind of a square shape. It's, it's in line right here-ish with that door. So I'm gonna put that in and it might be a little bit bigger. It might be a little bit wonkier, but you'll see this start to come together. Okay, so I'm going to draw these little bars, and I would hold off on a lot of detail until, I'm going to emphasize this part, until it comes time to really get into it, but um, I'm just, this is just my process of working, and so I'm going to show you how that is going. So you can see the door here. I have included that inner door frame, but you can see I've done it really, really sloppily. That's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna do that window next to it and I see that it goes out to about halfway to that balcony and then I can do like the inside of it like this. Um, I did this wider than it should be. I'm not worried about it, um, but I'm, I'm noticing it, you know? So as you notice things like this, you'll get better and better. It's just a matter of sticking with it and seeing where you can take it. So I'm gonna do another door. You can see that it's along the same uh, horizon line right here. <clears throat> okay. And then you can do some shadows. And the way I do shadows is I like to just do some hatching. Okay. The hatching is creating that depth. And the closer together it is, the more depth you have, if you overlap it, you'll see it gets even darker, and that creates that shadow. So you can do that anywhere that you want to. Um, one of the things that I really want to keep well, you, you to keep in mind, though, <clears throat> is that as you're creating all this extra depth, you might want to wait until you get your base illustration down. Because if you do it ahead of time, then you might put too much concentration in one spot. So something to think about. Okay, so I can see that I have another balcony up here. Um, the shape is starting to shift. So like this one is pretty straight on, whereas this one I see the bottom of. So I'm going to do that. And I see that the width of this door frame is about, let's see if I use my pen, it's about two of those. So I also noticed that it's even more angled. So this one's angled here, this one's angled even more steep. So I want to keep that in mind too. So I'm going to, there we go. Um, 
I went a little too far, so I'm just going to bring it farther this way and just ignore that that line is sticking out. And that's one of the beautiful things about sketching in this form is that imperfections are very, very welcome here. Okay, so I'm going to come all the way down here. All right, so that looks like the base of a balcony. And then I'm going to go straight up. Let's see how long that is. It's probably two-thirds-ish. So see how I'm just going fast. Um, see, that's on a slant. Here we go. And see how I'm stopping it right here. And I'm just going to ignore this. I can add something there later if I need to. Right now, I'm just ignoring it. I'm not letting it determine how I feel about my piece. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just adding some lines in here for some bars. I might add some depth in here. I might do more later though, but for now I'm just gonna get a little shadow going. I'm not putting too much emphasis in it. Okay, <clears throat> now I can draw the top of that door. It's gonna be a lot shorter than this one is. It's about, you know, real small sliver in comparison to this. So I'm gonna go about to right here, have that slant, it's actually steeper than that, so I'm gonna hit it harder and not worry that it's not perfect, okay? And so that door is up there hanging out on the balcony and I've got <clears throat> this building going on. And again, my angles might not be perfect, but overall, you'll see it come together. Um, and then from here, see this should have come out a little bit further, so I might actually do that. The nice thing about balconies is that you have that freedom if you have bars and they just keep going. Um, big picture, you're not really gonna notice those imperfections. Okay, and then, so I could keep going down, 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 see all these flower pots. I'd love to add those in. I'm probably gonna wait a second. I'll move on to the other side here real quick. And um, I'm gonna go with these awnings. The awnings are at eye level, so they're above this door. So see how I'm going across and then above? Going across and then above. So just about right here, I see that they're underneath that balcony kind of halfway, so I might do a little dot there so I can guide myself a little better. And then come out and down, and then at a little bit of an angle. And there's another awning just above that and see how it's gonna get cut off. I'm just gonna leave that line open like this and then come in and continue that line. So these are gonna be my awnings. <clears throat> and then I can have it drop down like this where there's that little sign hanging, okay? Real scribbly line, no problem. I see this nice long line I wanna take advantage of coming straight from that and it looks like it's going across and meeting about at the top here. So I'm gonna drag that all the way up like this, and then I'll put this balcony in. You can see this is the width here to here is about the same width from here to here. It's just that the angle's different. So that's helpful to know if I want to use my pen to see like, okay, I'm from here to here. It's about that long, so I'm gonna make my balcony from here to here. And it just comes straight off the building. Looks really weird, I know, <laughs> but, it's okay. Um, I'm probably gonna make that shorter actually because my illustration wouldn't make as much sense. So see how now that looks like a balcony, okay? Um, again, totally showing you how this does not have to be perfect. Uh, I can add shadow to that later if I want to. And then I can add a balcony right here that I see, but I'm gonna skip that because I actually want to focus on the buildings right here. So before I do that, I see that this line is coming down to here, but then the next wall is actually inward a little bit. So I'm gonna drag that down and then I can put this door in here. Okay. And now I see this building. So I see that it's coming from below the balcony here. So if I was to shoot that down like this and then come straight down, you'll see balconies coming off there too. So I wanna add those and I'm just looking at the angles that they're at, okay? See, it's all geometric. And then I'll do another one coming off here. Again, these shapes don't have to be perfect. You're just eyeballing it to get the detail in there. And then you see that there's doors doors. So now looking from a distance, I see what's going on here. I don't care that the lines aren't perfect. It's 
showing me what I want it, you know, what I want it to be. Okay, so I can't really tell what's going on here, how the buildings connect. So I'm just going to drag this all the way through and I might even add just one additional balcony. So that's just a creative choice that I'm making. <clears throat> and it's going to set that up so that I have a nice scene going on. Ideally, again, this would probably be a little bit higher because it's going down, but um, it's not that big of a deal because it's in the background and I don't want to draw too much attention to the background because I want the foreground to be in play and we'll add details to that in just a bit. So now I'm gonna put in the balconies below that. These are just some quick lines, quick door. They could just be, you know, some simple marks like this. So you don't even have to go into the detail of the shape. Um, and then that building's gonna come all the way down ish. Okay. What I don't want to do is I don't want to interfere with this line here and this line here. And if you need to draw it in, cool, draw it in. Like there's nothing wrong with having invisible lines that aren't invisible. Um, because you're going to be drawing over that and seeing, you know, like there's so many urban sketchers who will just draw their horizon line directly across it. And it looks like this and they don't care and they still will draw everything in and that line is there in their finished product and it still looks awesome. So don't overthink that part. Um, I see that there's a seam in the wall here. It could be connecting to a new building. Um, so I'm going to put that in as well. Okay, so see how that just separated the building. Now it looks like a building that's going that direction. I do wanna add some shading now to this door frame. And you can do cross hatching too, and that's where you start going the other direction. And it just adds a little more um, interest to your shadows. So you can do that however you want to. Okay, um, I'll do a little bit up here. I'm just going fast, so I don't want you guys to like worry too much about what this is looking like. Yours is probably going to look better than my example because you'll be able to concentrate on it more. There's an awning right here that I see um, on the next part. So I'm going to, this building's pretty steep here, so I'm going to draw that in like this. Um, I might have drawn it a little bit lower, but I'm choosing to do that because I want it to really be a part of my illustration here. So I'm going to come all the way down to about here because that's where that line would be. And so you can see now that this road is creating, drop my door down a little bit more. Um, this road is creating the base for my building so I don't have to think about it. Um, that's what those horizon lines will do. So this one looks like it's just featuring some windows. So here's where we get to really take advantage of these steep angles. So if you can think about, okay, from here to here, this should actually be steeper. Um, how would that angle be? Probably like this, right? So those are the windows. Okay, that's a little too steep, but um, that's that's gonna be your window, okay? And then from here to here, it's not as steep. So draw that in as it should be. From here to here, it's evening out a little bit. Um, and then down here, it's a little more straight. See how that's creating that depth? Um, so that's what you're gonna do there. I'm just adding like a indent to where the window would be. You don't have to do that. For me, it just gives it enough to where I don't have to do any more to it. Um, so then that awning comes into play. I'm actually gonna drop this even more. Um, the awning comes into play and I can do that at an angle, drop it down and back up. I guess this wouldn't be as, there we go. So see, I'm. Again, I know I'm a broken record right now, but you don't have to put that much thought into these shapes. As long as you're putting them where they should be and mind that horizon line, even if you mess it up, just go back over it again. It's no big deal um, because you're gonna eventually get to where you wanna go with it. So now that I have that in, I'm gonna hit this rectangle, the shape that I showed you here, and it looks like I'm dropping to about where the balcony is. So I'm gonna come out here, and I'm gonna make this pretty skinny, and then come straight down. And then I have this balcony that's facing toward me, and then a 
double door. So I want these to be kind of prominent. So I've decided that even though they're not cut off here, just because of the way that I've laid out my building, I'm going to have it cut off. See how what I mean by that? So the door, it would be like right here. So that is showing that it's continuing on. Okay. Doing that again. Okay. So now I have those in play. And that's in the background. And so you don't want to put a ton of detail in there. I have no idea what's going on down here because I can't see what I did. But I do see that there's a building shooting out right about here. So I'm going to shoot one out about here and then come down. And then I will just add some very faint, like I'm basically flicking my pen rather than setting it down because I don't want there to be a lot of detail here in the background. I might throw another building back here and maybe another and see how that I didn't even really do much with. It's not even going all the way down. That's because I want my background to fade. Okay. <clears throat> From here, I can choose to put these tables in here if I want to. I don't have to. Uh, for the sake of time, I think I'm going to skip it for now, but I will put in this window. I'm looking at where my horizon line is, about here, okay, and then coming in like this. And I know that that's wider than it should be, but everything's fine, everybody. <laughs> okay, so there's my window. Let me come up here and then add a little bit of shading. And your shading doesn't have to be like perfect hatching like you can have scribbles you can do anything that you want with that this is I think supposed to be a door so I'm going to bring that all the way down and then maybe make a door frame in here and get that nice and dark you don't have to do a lot of contrast either I just choose to because I think that it puts more life and energy into my personal illustrations okay then you see a balcony about right here so I'm going to put that in, have a base, and then have that come down. So see how I'm skipping, I'm going outside the lines. This is just interest that I'm adding. Okay, so now, mm, not yet because I want to get here. So I see that there's an awning somewhere right here behind. So I'm just going to kind of forge that in here like this. And then I might darken it a little bit so that I know that's what that is to so see how it's kind of tying all three of these together and then I might add a door oops that should have gone up should I have yeah whatever I'll just add some shading and call it good um yeah <laughs> not whatever you guys I'm sorry this is what happens when I'm trying to think further than where I'm at um yeah, anytime you're in doubt with that, just think about where am I on the paper? Where's my where's my vanishing point? Horizon line vanish. No, I think I keep using the wrong term too. Vanishing point, vanishing point. That's what I'm trying to remember, okay? Um, this is why I should never talk and instruct or think. You get it. <laughs> okay, forget what I'm saying. I'm done. Uh, from here, see there's like a booth down here with like hats on it. So I can add that in. Honestly, all I'm doing is mark making. So see, I just did a line and then I just did like a horseshoe, 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 horseshoe back and forth. And that's just creating some interest right here. There's another booth of some kind right here. Um, picnic tables coming out. So I'm just going to do some mark making right here and then do another horseshoe, horseshoe situation just to add some interest. And you can see now that I have like basically my street happening right here. And so there's a lot of stuff going on. And if I just do some simple mark making because it's in the distance, then I don't have to see and make out what that is. I just know that there's something going on. Um, now when I take a look back and I see what's happening, I see a lot of contrast here in the foreground. And these are also in the foreground. So I wanna make sure that that contrast is showing up evenly to everything that is in the foreground here, okay? And so that is where I can start putting in. And if you have, you know, if you get to your foreground and you haven't put in any shading yet, then that's the time to start thinking about that, okay? Up here I've got these flags. So I'm actually going to start putting those in 
I feel like something's missing right here. Oh, it's a balcony, I think. I'll just put in another, there we go. Okay, mark making. <laughs> All right, so the flags, this is my favorite. Um, I don't have to do it exactly as I see it, although I could. Um, I just don't want to because I don't want these flat pieces. I feel like they're not gonna translate the way that I want them to. So I'm going to just draw some lines across and then across. I might have it wave a little bit and then maybe across and maybe one more. Okay, so that's showing me like the, re the way that it's going skinnier and, and then fatter and, or longer, um, not skinnier, <laughs> shorter line longer 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 that's showing me that it's going and it's going downward so it's it's moving with the street as you can see um, and then I'm gonna draw the bunting so I can do them I don't have to do them all perfectly like this like you know you can see that they're flying so I might do some that are shorter I might do some that are moving like this some that are longer and it's okay that it's overlapping because that's part of the interest of doing these as sketches. You can overlap them if you want to make them darker. Um, you can also color them in. Okay, which is what I would do. And keep in mind too though, like you can do such minimal line work if you go back in and color this in with watercolor later because your watercolor will show all the depth for you depending on how you put it in and you would just do you would treat that the same way that you would mark making so if you have like an area that you want to add depth to you would just add a little more pigment to that area with watercolor um one of my favorite urban sketchers is James Richards and he puts a lot of contrast in with black and I just love the way that it looks and it's not for everyone um, might not be your style at all but I'm really really drawn to it I want to point out that as I'm getting f like f quote further away which is down further on these buildings I'm making these a lot smaller and that's to show that they're getting further away and then I might start making it a little bit lighter on this last one because it's kind of fading in the distance. Okay, so there we go. I've got these flags. I've got my scene. I know it looks a little bit strange. Um, real quick, I'll show you. If I wanted to add like kind of that cobblestone idea, I have these stones that are closer to me, so they're longer. Um, as they get further away, they get shorter in width. And skinnier okay and eventually they just become marks so you can do that denser but I, I always recommend just doing it a little bit because you'd be surprised a little bit just goes a long long way and then I might also make it so that my horizon line is more wiggly and that's just creating more character and movement so quick crash course on sketching your favorite place and I want you guys to do this because it's so, so fun. I'm going to show you real quickly um, some other examples that I have done as I've been traveling. So this is just a scene um, that's like flat scene against, you know, it's building and whatnot. So it doesn't have that vanishing point. Um, <laughs> something Laura drew. These are some flat uh, houses. But here's um, Rothenburg. So this is really fun because it's got these German homes. It's got this cobblestone road that kind of goes under this little tunnel in this building here. So that can be a lot of fun. You can also see that I started on it and then I decided to go another route, which this one would still be salvageable. I think that I mostly just wanted more room. Um, here's another example of a city on top of a hill. And then this one is kind of like a little cafe. It's unfinished, but I like the way that it went. Um, or like unfinished according to what I normally would do. But see how I didn't, I started doing these roofs and then I thought, you know what? I don't need to do the rest of it. I've got how, what I want here. So you really need to understand like when it's okay to stop. Um, in this case, I've got some uh, power lines and then you can see my vanishing point is actually going to the left. But as long as I had that in, I knew that. Um, so these are just examples, and I encourage you to play around with it. Again, what Laura drew, don't look. <laughs> She's real funny. Okay, so that's uh, your quick course. Grab a photo that you love and go to town because this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, thanks, 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 thanks.